These are the batteries that power everything at my gate. And there's a lot now. But they're not quite up to the task, so in this video we're going to replace them with... <coughs> Wait! <coughs> These new batteries from Lightime! Yep, these are two brand new lithium phosphate iron batteries, um, which I hope is going to do the job. <laughs> anyway, um, this is obviously a lithium type battery, the one I have a lead acid, so quite a different setup, but we'll get to more about that later. Um, the reason I'm using these, and I'll, I'll take them out of the box in just a second, is that I need more capacity. So currently, as you can see right there, I am producing about 1.1, 1.2 kilowatt hours a day from the solar panels. Um, that, that data is from the, my uh, Voltron uh, solar charge controller, which I did a whole video on as well, which is linked there. Um, and my setup right now, because there's now a intercom for the gate, there's a switch, there's some Shelly units, uh, there is um, a Zigbee thing. There's a whole bunch of stuff in that box there, the gray box and it uses about 900 watts a day. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, it's, it's using a lot um, for solar setup. So I need to be able to charge or store more energy, which is where these come in. So I currently have 170 amp hour batteries, two of them in a 24 volt configuration. These are 230 amp hour batteries, 12 volt as well. So that will also be a 24 volt configuration. They have a whole bunch of other advantages as well, which I will get to later. Um, but for now, I think we'll take them out of the box and then I'm probably going to charge them first. We'll install them, we'll go through what they do and, uh, and see where we go from there. All right, let's get the battery out of the box. It's probably not a big surprise. It's one big battery. Oh, nice. It's in a little bag here. So here where we got, we got the product manual. We'll probably need that for charging it. Life and Discovery. Certificates for the battery, very good. And we have a service card, which is probably what we need. Oh, there's something about all the things you're not allowed to do. And some stickers. Who wants the stickers? Comment below if you want the stickers. Uh, post bolts are here, so that's for putting on the terminals. All right, we have the positive negative caps and we have two bolts for the post terminals. Here's the actual thing we're waiting for. <coughs> Wow, big battery. All right, you ready? It's not as heavy as the lead, is it? But it's heavy enough. There we go. Whew. So now we got two 12 volt, 230 amp hour batteries. Um, yeah, I mean, there's not much to see. It's a battery box, known quantity. It's a battery, but it is lithium iron phosphate. So we've got two batteries. I think we're gonna charge them up first before we install them. And then I'll talk more about what they do and why I chose these. All right, the lifetime batteries are now charged to about 13.3 volts or thereabouts. Um, according to the manual, 13.3 to 13.33 volts is 75% charged. So that is what they're gonna get because we only had an old sort of lead acid type charger, which you can use I did check this on the internet and the internet is never wrong, but they charge it just fine, but they will never charge it fully unless you have a proper, you know, lithium phosphate, iron, iron phosphate charger thing, um, which you can get, not hard to get. We just didn't have one. Um, so they seem to be charged enough for now. So the plan is to disconnect the Voltron, the battery, so we don't make a mess. Um, we gotta have to uh, basically, <laughs> copy this setup onto these batteries because it'll still be a 24 volt setup and it'll still go the same way etc etc um, obviously we've got to move these wires um, and then we've got to change the charging method on the Voltron as well because we're now no longer charging lead acid deep cycle batteries we are charging lithium phosphate lithium iron phosphate I'm never going to learn that am I lithium um, iron phosphate batteries instead so there's a different algorithm for that. And then um, we'll, um, we'll see how that all goes and um, I'll, be, I'll be right back after we've done that.
we have two 230 mAh batteries installed, still in a 24 volt configuration. That hasn't changed. Uh, they pretty much just copied it from the lead acid batteries. Of course, I did update the um, charging method on the Victron here, and I did notice when I opened up the app that it is charging at higher wattage. It's at about almost 300 watts now, which never happened with the lead acid batteries. So that's a good sign. There's more juice going into them. Um, now, my method for covering them up is this, and I might need your help with this. It's the biggest um, storage box I could find. Well, not the biggest, but big enough. And that's my, that's with a brick on top. Um, I might actually drill some holes in it just for a bit of ventilation, that, which is what we had on the other box. Um, but that's, that's my plan. If you have a better way of covering them up, is there something that's pre-made? Is there, yeah, I don't know. Let me know in the comments because that would be super helpful because this is um, it's all I got. <laughs> um, but I am gonna let them charge for a while now and discharge, use them for oh, probably a few days um, because I wanna see how they perform compared to the lead acid batteries, of course. And, uh, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go over some of all the features that are with uh, lithium uh, iron phosphate batteries compared to the lead acid and why I chose them. But I'm gonna do that when I'm not sitting in the sun because it's hot right now. <sighs> now might be a really good time to um, subscribe to the channel because this year, 2025, I am going for 50,000 subscribers, but I need your help. So if you want to click that subscribe button below, that would be much appreciated. And if you're interested in these lifetime batteries, they have given me a discount code. So if you check out the link down below in the description, you can actually get a bit of discount on these. And uh, if you're in Australia, they are delivered from an Australian warehouse. So they are locally delivered and you will get them pretty quick. Um, well, it's the same in the US or wherever, um, but Australia in particular, I just wanted to mention that. And if you really want to support the channel even more, that, put a comment down below, ask some questions about it. What could I do better? Is there something I didn't cover? Or you could check out the merch. I have designed a bunch of different things, um, t-shirts, mugs, etc., which is kind of fun. And it'll support the channel and allow me to do more of these kinds of videos. So that would be much appreciated. But uh, ah, all right, back to the video. So this is the first time for me uh, exploring lithium batteries in any capacity outside other than in my phone or something like that. So this is all a bit new to me. So I thought I'll just um, mention some of the features that I thought was kind of interesting for these batteries and why I prefer these now over lead acid batteries. So um, first of all, uh, I got notes here because I've got to remember all the numbers. Um, you can uh, support 200 amps of current out of this. 200 amps, as it says, heavy duty batteries suitable for 12 volt trolling motors. Um, so there's marine and RVs and all that sort of stuff. UPS as well, backup power. So 200 amps, that's, that's a decent amount of grunt to come out of it. Um, they are quite safe. They have a low cutoff temperature um, or low temperature cutoff. So if these get to zero degrees uh, Celsius, so when it's frozen or it's frost, um, they will stop charging. And then if they get to minus 20 uh, degrees Celsius, and if you use Fahrenheit, it's a different number, um, then it uh, completely stops uh, the load, the, the load disconnected just to prevent any damage to them. So that's quite neat. Um, now I can't really test that that's true because, well, it's summer and it's not zero degrees. Um, they have uh, automatic low overload protection. So I was a bit sort of cautious when I was hooking all this up because again, this is the first time I'm using these sort of batteries, lithium batteries outside. Um, but there is protection here for um, overload protection and recovery. So that sort of gave me a little bit of peace of mind that I was not gonna mess things up too bad. Um, I did connect them correctly though, so all is well. It, it can do 4,000 cycles, or well, rated to 4,000 cycles of you know, discharging and charging. And if you do that once a day, which is roughly what I'm doing now. I mean, I'm not completely discharging them. But then once a day, 4,000 cycles, that's more than 10 years, <laughs> right? So, okay, if that, if that holds true, that is impressive. Um, I mean, I'll take that. Um, they have, um, they of course, they're IP65 waterproof, so these boxes are IP65 rated. They are protected against uh, ingress of dust and uh, fluids, but I still have that special box that I put on just for a bit of extra protection. And again, if you know a better system, let me know. Um, it, there's a claim here that they say they're six times as cost effective compared to lead acid batteries. Um, I, I don't know exactly how that's calculated, but I mean, that sounds pretty good. Uh, 21 cents per deep cycle instead of $1.21. 
uh, for lead additive batteries. So yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that's calculated, but you know, it sounds impressive. And of course it has um, ultra long run time. So these, these have, what, what is it? 5,000 watt hours of power in them, which is a lot. Right, so that's, if I use 800 watts a day, that's four or five days at least that I should get out of this. Um, and they have uh, six times the energy density compared to lead acid. And yeah, probably because they're not as heavy as the lead acid. I had to carry the other ones back up the hill. They're a lot heavier than these, <laughs> just saying. Um, and of course you can uh, charge them in different ways. So you can use solar or you can use a, uh, a specific uh, lithium iron phosphate charger or you can use a generator to charge them up. So there's a few different ways you can do it. But that, that is just all benefits to me. Um, of course, over time, it'll prove whether that comes true or not, but so far, so good. Yeah, I can't really, um, I can't really fault them compared to lead, lead acid batteries. And yeah, you might say, well, the cost is really high. And if you think that, you can actually get a bit of discount if you use the link down in the description as well. Um, there's a special code just for you. Yeah, so if you want to get these, but no, they are more expensive than lead acid, uh, absolutely, but you also get much longer lifetime out of them, apparently. Um, and uh, as you'll see in just a second, they, they, I think there's other benefits as well that make that cost worth it. So those are just some of the features uh, for the, these two lifetime batteries. All right, so let me just show you some of the stats and some of the things that I've discovered over the last sort of four days when I've been using uh, these lithium batteries. So I'm here in the Victron, or as I like to say, Voltron <laughs> um, app, which is the direct connection to the Victron um, uh, solar charge control, which is inside of the cupboard here. Let me show you just so you get the context. There we go, which just sits just right there. I'm connected to that. So um, we can see we're charging at 146 watts, um, which is, sort of we're early in the day now that's not too bad the sun is not actually directly on the solar panels there's four of them there um, so that's that's not bad but i mean that has nothing to do with the batteries as such what does have something to do with batteries if i go to history you can see here so here's the previous days you can see that uh, the consumption which is right there at the bottom is roughly 800 watts a day i thought it was about 900 but it turns out it's about 800 watt hours a day um, so 0 0.7 0 0.8 kilowatt hours a day is what i'm using with all of this and the intercom and the gate, etc. So um, you can see here's the uh, standard charging here. This is the few, last few days before I put the batteries on. Then I added the batteries and it went up a lot because these have higher capacity. And as I said, I charged them to about 80%, 75%. So there was a lot of charge still to go. So that's why the bulk charging, which is when it's you know, like the, the, the main charging cycle of the solar controller made it go so high. So you can see I was up to 1.8 kilowatt hours instead of 1.1 uh, three days ago. And the day before was 1.7. So uh, it does take in a lot more energy if the batteries have uh, capacity for them. Because you can see here yesterday, we were back down to 1.1 because that's sort of the maintenance cycle, I'd imagine. If there's sun every day, it charges up till uh, the batteries are in the float state, meaning that the uh, energy is not going to the batteries as such. It's more just being consumed as it is collected. And of course, you can only go so far. 1.1 kilowatt hours seems to be the max for me. Um, and you can see here today, we've only just got 50 watt hours so far. <laughs> it is early in the day, right? Still sunny, still warm. Um, so it definitely has made an impact in that. Now, the more interesting part of it to me is if, if I go here to Home Assistant and you can see here's my Victron Bluetooth sniffer, which is that thing little there that catches the Bluetooth signal from here so I can get into Home Assistant. Again, the video was linked before, made a whole video on that as well. So we have the output voltage here for the solar charge controller. And you can see right now it's charging at 27 volts. That's pretty normal, a um, little bit of sun. It goes up to about 28 and a half, 29 almost volts when it's full sun charging, like bolt charging into the battery. And you see it sort of tapers off. Compare this, um, but the, the interesting part of this with lithium batteries that I didn't know, and I've learned compared to lead acid, is that they discharge at over 13 volts for a long time until they're about 20% full or so. So you actually get higher voltage for much longer than with lead acid. That to me is a plus because everything works better when they have a constant voltage, such as your Shelly units, my gate opens quicker. Um, uh, it's just more reliable. 
right? Because it's, it, it just maintains that voltage for so long. And you can see here overnight, which is you can see at the bottom of the graph here, it's been running at 26 and a half volts or so the whole night. Like it doesn't really curve down. That is a huge plus in my book. And of course, the much bigger capacity is another plus. So those are just some of the immediate benefits that I have discovered is that it charges a lot faster. Uh, I get to float charge much quicker than with the lead acid batteries. Um, it, is, it maintains a higher voltage. And of course, the bigger capacity means that I now have four or five days of use out of this before they even go empty. And that's considering if I get no sun whatsoever, which is highly unlikely here. Um, now, this is of course gonna be interesting to in winter to test because we probably can't charge them all the way up every day because there won't be enough sun. Um, but I might come back to you in a few months with another video just on how they've performed and how that has actually worked out um, and how the setup is, is functioning. Um, but so far, this is, uh, this is working really well. I am thrilled to be honest with this setup and these lifetime batteries have um, have really improved the, the just what I can do down here in terms of voltage and power so yay yep so that was another addition to my gate setup uh, I keep improving on it this is uh, the project that keeps on giving but these lifetime batteries so far so good as a lot more oomph I can only recommend lithium iron phosphate batteries. I don't have any experience with any other kind of lithium batteries, but these ones, so much oomph in it. They've constant voltage. Everything is just really good um, so far. So let me know what you think in the comments as always, and consider subscribing to the video. And uh, I think that's it for this time. Now I need to um, figure out what the next gate upgrade is. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Yes, these are two brand new lithium, 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 lithium.